Hey there YouTube, this is Estrium4306 back with another random project prototyping video, I guess you could say. And these are these little tiny OLED, or not OLED, e-ink screens that they sell. Um, this one is made by a company called Helltech. But yeah, they're really neat. Uh, this one's a 2.13 inch and it's three color. As you can see, it's white, black, and red. And just focus in on a bit on that. And they use a simple serial interface and you can see... Uh, basically power, ground, 3.3 volts only. Do not run these at 5 volts. You will kill the controller. There's a data command, a serial data input, a chip select, clock, and busy. And there's also on some modules a, um, a reset pin. Uh, if you don't have a reset pin, uh, you can actually use the power pin and just uh, put that on an I.O. and then toggle it. These uh, These displays use pretty much like a tiny bit of electricity so any io should be able to run these displays uh, i would guess in the low milliamp range when the displays are actually actively switching uh, so here you can see because the arduino is a five volt device I actually use a resistive divider to bring it down to three volts about three or 3.3 so i can run this now you can see in this demo i'm using the example code um i'll link it down below from um one of the manufacturers that sells these, the uh, specific manufacturer that I got this from off eBay. They didn't have any links or anything, but I just Googled uh, the display size, e-paper, and um, I said three color. And I found a uh, a link that I'll put down below where I had the firmware that'll work for this. But anyway, uh, you can see I modified the demo slightly. Um, so the demo originally uh, just has one... Um, image and it's this guy here you can see it flashes a couple times it actually takes quite a while to uh, cycle the image um, red is harder for it to it takes more time for it to bring up here this is the original demo and it just had this image um, this will eventually time out and this is a part that i added um, i added some shapes and whatnot well this is part of the demo code that was commented out but um i added just SGM4306 and that bit there. Uh, the library is a little bit confusing to use. Um, I'm probably going to end up writing my own uh, functionality on top of that for the graphical interface. Uh, but in terms of the initialization, these uh, EPD displays, uh, e-paper, basically, um, they require some finagling to initialize the screen because you actually have to write um, lookup tables for how it transitions the uh, the electrodes in order to get the different colors to show up properly. Uh, you can see here, this is actually pretty high resolution. I believe it's like 200 something by um, maybe 120, something like that. So it's actually pretty decently high resolution if I just uh, focus in here. Uh, yeah, it's, it's pretty clear. When I first received this display, I wish I took a picture before I overrode it. But it had an old image. Um, it was actually the first image that I showed you. It had that. But um, all the colors were really muddled, muddled and the background wasn't white. It was like a pink. Um, and that was something that I found really interesting because of the way that these displays work. There are actually little capsules, like uh, tubes you could think of, filled with a viscous liquid. And um, each of these uh, pigments, are, they're little tiny balls that are floating in that viscous liquid. And there's white, black, and red balls. The red balls are slightly larger than the white and the black ones, so they take longer to travel up or down. And all these balls are charged with um, positive or negative charge. So black might be negative and white might be positive and the red might also be negative, say. Um, there are electrodes on the top. There's a clear one and on the bottom as well. And to switch the pixels, um, what you do is you put a, a charge so that you attract the color that you want towards the top and the opposite on the bottom so that you can get say black, red, or white. Um, and the way that you can actually select between black and red which would have the same charge is um, timing basically and the amplitude of the voltage. So you basically put a, a charge on the top sheet that attracts both black and red but the black gets there quicker because it's a smaller particle. So what you have to do is then wait, if you want red, you have to wait till the red comes to the top and then switch it back, reverse it, so that the black starts going down, but the red is slower, so 
if you just have the black go to, roughly to the middle, uh, then you'll only see the red. And if you just want to display the black, then you just have a short uh, pulse, essentially, to bring the black up quickly while the red's in the middle, then you shut it off. So you, you only see black. It's actually really clever. And um, there's a lot of sort of like secret sauce code um, tied in with these demos for what those voltages and what those timings are in order to get the colors correct. Um, but uh, Ben Krasnow did of, um, of Applied Science, I'll link down the video below that sort of inspired me to get one of these displays to play around with. He did a really neat video about how to do partial refreshes because this takes quite a while as you saw. Um, it has to flicker and it, you know multiple times and it takes maybe about 15 to 20 seconds to actually get the image fully on the display there so you know that takes quite a while which isn't a problem for like relatively static displays but yeah you're not going to get like video on this or anything like that these are just meant to be like either you have this as like a name tag or something that doesn't change a lot like for instance you can have this as like a, a youtube subscriber counter or like a weather station where once a day it'll update and then it keeps the information on there you can see it's powered i can turn it off i could even disconnect this entirely and the image is retained there's absolutely nothing powering that so that's absolutely neat and this is the same technology that's used in um, those e-paper displays for e-books. And um, yeah, I always wanted to play around with these. And kind of just until semi-recently, these were really expensive. Now they're super cheap. This entire module, uh, with, which just came with this and then the header to solder, cost me a little over $10. I think maybe $11 or $12, which is really crazy for like, how kind of high resolution this is and like the applications you can use this for are really neat. Um, so uh, all in all, if you guys are interested in this kind of stuff and you're tinkering with Arduino um, and you want a display that you don't have to change frequently, but you can display like neat graphics on or like useful information that um, you want to remain on the display after you pull power, uh, definitely recommend getting one of these e-paper displays to uh, play around with. Just get a... Uh, Real close up. That's really sharp, and the colors are really vibrant. They also come in uh, yellow instead of the red, so it'll be black, white, and yellow. Uh, but I think the red stands out a lot more, and it looks a lot sharper to my eyes, so I wanted to get the red. You can also get ones that are just black and white, and the updates on those are quite a bit quicker. Um, but I think having the red in addition is, is really neat. What I am curious about, what I want to do some experimentation on, is if you only do black and white, if you don't have the red, uh, are the updates still, you know, quite long? Is it any shorter just because you're only displaying black and and white, or is it always going to take longer for these types of displays with three colors? So I might do some experimentation while I write the uh, the low level driver to to do all you know the initialization of the display and everything, so I can port it to a pic. Because currently this um, the software is written in C++ uh, for Arduino, basically. It's set up for, but I want to actually run this with a pick. Anyway, hopefully you guys enjoyed this video. And um, if you want to see more on this, uh, you know, just say down below. Or if you have some neat project ideas I can use this for, uh, just holler down below. And I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye.